Welcome to C3 San Diego. Need something fresh, real, and powerful in your life? Connect with us on social media, get live stream service notifications, podcasts, and up-to-date information on upcoming events. We are so glad you're joining us for a powerful, life-transforming message from one of our C3 San Diego pastors. We would love to hear about how God is impacting your life through this ministry. Please share your experience with us at info at c3sandiego.com. If you'd like to be a part of what C3 Church is doing in the city of San Diego and beyond, you can contribute financially by going to c3give.com and choosing the giving option that works best for you. We hope you enjoy this message. That's my kind of intro music, Rocky. Wow, I of the tiger, you wanna get me motivated, you put that on. Thanks, media team. Woo, that's a way to start a Sunday. Wow, what an honor to be in God's house with God's people, to give God's word. Man, I am excited. God gave me a download for you today. I think it's gonna bless your life. So, hey, let's join me in prayer and kick this thing off right. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to just be on your stage in your house to communicate to your people. God, the word that you gave me, may it inspire, uplift, encourage, and accelerate the life of everyone listening. God, thank you for all that you are doing, the lives that you are going to change through this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow. Well, look at you guys. You look excited to be here, and I am excited to preach this message. So... First, I want to give uh, an honor where honor is due. Our senior pastors, man, some of the salt in the earth, tell you, over a decade ago, came to this country. They were obedient. They were faithful. Didn't know a soul. And to see what they've been able to build, one couple sold out to God's mission and vision for their life. So thank you, Pastor Jurgen Leanne. You guys are salt to the earth. Love you. Thank you to Pastor John and Becky, too, for giving me the opportunity to be on this stage. They have mentored us and encouraged us and uh, love following in their footsteps. So, so you guys ready? All right. Well, this series, I love the title, Accelerate. Who wants to accelerate their life this year? All right. I'm talking to the right people then. So, you know, I love to always do a little research on words and what they mean. So I looked up accelerate in the dictionary, and it means to undergo a change in speed to begin to move more quickly, to speed up, to increase, to go faster, gain momentum. And I love, and what I chose as the title of my message is to put the pedal to the metal. Yeah, come on. There you go, media team, right there. We were meant to live an accelerated life and put the pedal to the metal. How many people have heard that term before? All right, I'm talking to the right people again, amen. One definition I love about accelerate is this. Acceleration is the rate or change of speed of an object, think of yourself, by a net result of any and all forces acting on the object. So I'm going to talk and unpack today, what are all the forces in our life that were meant to accelerate us? And I'm going to unpack five of them. So today I want to take you on a journey with me. What I have discovered in my own life, 48 years young, I've been on quite a journey in my life from Virginia. Hi, Mom. Shout out to you. I love you. I'm the man I am today because I followed your example, and uh, you're the greatest mom. Thank you. And uh, (laughs) where are the tissues? I might need one. So, But yeah, so 48 years. What have I learned? Um, You know, I kind of look at 50 as like a, you know, a half time. You know, pause, reflect. What has God brought you through? What have you learned? And then how can you accelerate your life, no matter where you're at in life? But but God has just given me some great downloads. So we're going to (coughs) start... with a point, and I'm going to give you an action, because at the end of this message, God's going to speak to you personally. He's going to give you your own unique download. You're going to hear something. It may not even be something I say, but something in your spirit's going to resonate. Jot it down, record it, take every thought captive, and then apply it in your life. Amen? All right. Point number one, get ready. The church. Proverbs 22.6 says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when they get old, they will not depart from it. So let me tell you about my story. So for 18 years, my mother 
would drive me and my brother over to grandma. She never learned how to drive. And we would go to church. Mom would drop us off. She probably needed a break from two boys that tried to kill each other 24-7. So I don't blame her. But I went to a Baptist church. Any Baptist uh, out there? Okay, you know what I'm talking about. So, you know, 18 years planted in a Baptist church. And, uh, you know, what I realized is that I love Sunday school. I didn't quite understand big church. And we used the King James Version of the Bible. And I don't know about you, but when they started with thee and thou and thus, I was lost. I had no idea what the word was saying. Anybody can relate out there? Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, what God was teaching me is I was immersed in uh, those great hymns, uh, in prayer, in Sunday school, in big church. God was planting seeds. God was planting seeds that I didn't know that one day would germinate. And at nine years old, I was on the back row and I felt the call. You all remember when you felt that call, that you're going to step out on faith, that today is your day to go and just accept Christ, accept all that he did for us. And I walked down that big, scary aisle, felt like every eye was on me, but that didn't matter. What mattered is I wanted my life to change. I wanted a father I never knew. I wanted a savior to forgive me of my sins. I wanted to lock in and secure my eternity. So for those of you here today, if you don't know that you know that you know, that your eternity is secured, today is your day. I'm believing for you. You're going to give your life to Christ, and it's going to be a powerful day. So being raised in church, nine years old. So on April 15th, 1979, that's 39 years and one week ago today, I gave my life to Christ. It's been the greatest thing that I've ever done in my life. And so once you lock in your eternity, God doesn't just leave you there. Now it's go time. It's time to put the pedal to the metal and accelerate your life, and that's getting to know him. So a couple things for you. Jeremiah 1.5, we had this on our daughter's wall. It said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So one, God knew you before you were conceived, and God set you apart. You're unique, one of a kind. There will never be another you. This is your time, your place to make an impact. And so he appointed us to be a prophet to the nations. And let me tell you, you know, I have followed in my mom and grandmother's footsteps. I have brought my kids to church. I have learned. I have immersed them in this environment. And I'm happy to say my kids actually beat me. My daughters are in the audience. And at before their seventh birthday, they accepted Christ in their life. I tell you what, no greater joy as a parent to see your kids eternity locked in. So for both parents and for children out there today, the greatest thing you can do is be in church. You know, if you really want an accelerated life, soak and serve. But God will impart a vision. He will part who you are, your identity. The words from this book will come alive in your life and in your heart, and it'll accelerate you. Amen? Amen. So then I want to unpack this uh, one verse And it's uh, Exodus 28, and it's about the fourth commandment. You know, we've all heard the Ten Commandments. The fourth one is about honoring the Sabbath. And God spends his time, multiple sentences here on this one verse, and it's important. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. That's why Sunday is so important. That's why seeing every single one of you in here is the greatest thing you can do during your week. Look around you. Do you see an empty seat? That's your mission. Let's make God's house so full that standing room only out there in the hall. So each and every one of you can do that. We are the invitation. We made multiple invitations for people to come today. Some accepted, some didn't, but we don't give up on them. Get them into this house. Their life will be accelerated. So your action is to honor Sunday and make this 
the highlight of your week. Secure your eternity if you're in here today and you've not accepted Christ. And make Sunday a fun day. Should be a day where you relax, you pause on the week, you reflect on the message, you take somebody out to lunch, and you just enjoy. You recharge, recoup, and get ready for the mission ahead. Amen? Amen. All right. Point number two. You ready? Okay, here it is. This book right here, the Bible. You want an accelerated life? Seek wisdom. Joshua 1.8 says, keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Here it is. You want this secret? Here it is. Then you will be prosperous and successful. How many people want to be prosperous and successful? Did God not just tell you one of the golden keys right there? Meditate when? Day and night. Amen. So I've not always been great at that, but man, the reminder of that to just sow that word into my life and to let God's word come out of my mouth. Psalm 1, 1 through 3 said, Blessed is the man who walks in the counsel of not who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Now here's what's going to happen when you do that. And he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its season. What season are you in? Whose leaf, I think that's my children, shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Golden secret right there again. Meditate day and night. Delight in the law. You will prosper. So let me give you a quick story. One of the greatest things that uh, hindered my acceleration is not having the right Bible. Growing up in a Baptist church, the King James Version, I didn't understand a word that was in there. Can anybody relate to me? Yeah, so I didn't know there were other versions of the Bible out there. And so here I am, 18 years, I really can't read this. It's like a foreign language, and then I go off to college. So I went to the Virginia Military Institute for the sole purpose of being a Marine officer, to earn a scholarship. Hoorah, we got some Marines in here. It's military, thank you for your service to our country. You're the one percenter, I'm proud of you. Pick up your cross, went to go fight for freedom for somebody else, just like our Savior did. So I'm in college, and graduation comes around. I've earned the mechanical engineering degree. I'm going to be commissioned a second lieutenant, the United States Marine Corps. But there was a special ceremony, a ceremony that meant more than all of that. And it was a ceremony where all cadets, they were brought into the chapel, and they were brought up one by one, and they were given this the Holy Bible engraved with their name. And little did I know that that was the greatest thing that I gained from college. This book of wisdom, this book of prosperity, this book of identity. I did not know how cherished this book was. And so I'd set it on my shelf. And over the next 10, 20, 30 years, I'm an avid learner. I got books on business, books on marriage, books on coaching, on mentoring, anything I could to be a better man, to develop my character. But the one book that I forgot to read was the Bible. And it is the greatest book you will ever encounter. You know, and one thing that I've learned is that, you know, not only is this the greatest book that should be on your shelf, it should be on your nightstand, it should be in your car, but more importantly, it should be in your heart. That's where we need to get the Bible. When it's in your heart, you talking about an accelerated life, you are off to the races. And I would want to share this with you because sometimes we forget how important this book is. From the Guinness Book of World Records website, I quote, Although it is impossible to obtain exact figures, there is little doubt that the Bible is the world's best-selling and most widely distributed book. A survey of the Bible Society concluded that around 5 billion, that's billion with a B, copies have been printed. The whole Bible has been translated into 349 languages. 2,123 languages have at least one book of the Bible in that language. So golden nugget number two, you want an accelerated life? Buy a Bible today. A Bible that you could read. There's all kinds of translations out there. Grab it first. You know, what's the first thing that you read? Is it a magazine? Is it another book? Or do you put this word into your life first? When you put this word, man, it is game over. So that's one thing that I have learned. 
So read the Bible. And then another little plug. I'm just going to be a little bold up here because I think we should be a witness. And when you bring this Bible to church and when we reference it on stage and I look out in the audience and I see every one of you grab underneath your seat your Bible with your notes, how God has spoken with you, and you open it up to that chapter, that verse, how encouraging is that? What a witness tool that, that is. And I know today we live in an electronic age, and this is convenient, absolutely. iPads are convenient. But did you know that every time that you take your Bible somewhere, open it up, even if it's just in church, you're a witness to somebody around you. Like, wow, I want my own. One of the cherished things that I always love, my father-in-law is in the, uh, the house today, and going to church with him in Tucson after I married his daughter, he'd carry around a pink Bible. Now, how many men know you got to be a manly man to carry a pink Bible? Yeah, but what was on that Bible was his daughter's name. And like, even though she had left the nest and married me and I took her all around the world, he just cherished that that was her Bible and wanted to read her notes and the things that, that God spoke to her about. So the legacy, it just dawned on me that like the legacy, one of them that I want to leave behind to my kids is they can go back and look at that tattered, worn, notes all over the page, teardrops, you know, in there and say, wow, how did God speak to my father? What did he learn? I can't think of a better gift you can leave your kids. That wasn't even in my notes. That's just a freebie. <laughs> so, all right, we ready for point number three? Association. Now, this is a, a, a good one right here. James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man avails much. One of the things we lo love about Emerge is because that's sometime for many men, the only time of year where men get real around the campfire. And they let other men into their life, let them know their struggles and what they're facing. And when one man gets real, and I encouraged every captain, I said, your very first talk around the campfire, if you get real as a leader, you have just opened up all 40 men staring back at you to get real. And that's what makes a merge powerful, and that's what brings breakthrough. So get real, confess your sins, and pray for one another. John 13, 34, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Even as I have loved you, you have also loved one another. And there's been many people in our life that, for lack of a better word, are probably unlovable. They have done things to you, harmed you. It could have been a parent, a good friend, a business partner, whatever it is. But can we have the character and can we look at them as God looks at them? And when our Savior is laying on the cross, what does he say? Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. When you have that level of character, God can use that. You can be a witness. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as you are also doing. How many people in your life encourage you, lift you up? We need people in our life. The world will beat you down. Who's in your corner? Who's there to just champion you? Find people like that. In Ephesians 4, 2 through 3, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Look around this room. Every one of us, sons and daughters of the King, every one of us meant to rule and reign. Every one of us meant to be unified. That's why God talked about we are the body of Christ. Some of you are a foot, a finger, a hand, an arm. Discover your purpose. Discover your calling in this church. But the power of unity, it is unbelievable. I think every man in here who has ever came to emerge in that opening night, worship. We had 1,300 men in seats. The power of unity. The power of men getting their roar back. Being unified with God our Father up there. It is unstoppable. That is what I have personally taken from Emerge every year, is that if we stay unified, if we love each other, we cannot be stopped. Amen? So I surrounded myself with various associations that have taught me various things in life that accelerated my life. Some good, not, some not so good. So first of all, my father figures. They taught me not, what not to do. I am on my fifth stepfather. And the things that I observed growing up was adultery, workaholic, 
time abuse, mental abuse, and drunkardness. That's literally what I saw, you know, and you can choose to follow in that footstep or you can choose to break that chain and say, not on my watch. I'm a new man, a new creation. God will use all things together for good. So have that perspective that like, it doesn't matter what I came through, it's where I'm going. I've just learned how, what not to do. So I am now married for 21 years. I've got two kids that are planted in church. I've got friends, I've got family. And so don't let the past define you. God's got such a beautiful future for every one of you. Then my coaches, anybody play sports in here? All right, what I learned was the value of discipline and hard work. Now, I grew up in Virginia. I loved to play every sport and uh, football team. So I, I tried out every year, I made the cut. But let me tell you about our football team. Our football team averaged six foot tall, 200 pounds. Can anybody relate? So here I am eating everything in mom's kitchen every single week to put pounds on me. I get up to a raw 165, five foot nine. So I'm going against these giants of men. But I tell you what, I loved every second of it. <coughs> and what I did, I knew that to survive, to make a, a name for myself, to be part of the team, that I had to give 100% every play, every down, every practice, every game. And so the greatest compliment I ever got in sports was when my defensive coach pulled me up our senior year. He said, Fuller, get up here. He grabbed me by the shoulder pad and he said, look at him, look at Fuller. He's five foot nothing, 165 pounds. But he's got one thing you guys don't have. He's got a heart. If you guys had half the heart of Fuller, we'd be state champions. Come on, that's the kind of heart we're looking for. And here's the beauty of that. We went to the state championship my senior year. Now granted, we lost by one point, very bitter de defeat. I'm still stung by it. But I tell you what, one man, one person, that's you, operating in excellence, given 100% at whatever God has put you on, you can raise everyone else up. So the value of coaches and mentors, discipline and hard work. My pastors, Pastor Jurgen and Leanne, wow, the value of vision. Don't you love their vision? Aren't you caught up and inspired by their vision? We need people in our life that are visionaries, that cast something bigger and bolder. Jeff Forbes and I know for Emerge, we were at 1,000 men last year. So, you know, a good 20, 30% growth would be off the chart. What's Pastor Jurgen say? 1,600! I'm like, that's 60% increase. What is going on here? I was like, we're good. I don't know if we're that good. So, but I love a big, bold, audacious vision because if people don't cast a vision that requires God to partner with, you'll live below your means. Amen. So we did everything possible. The Jeff Rutowskis, the Noahs, they dominated here at Central, met the goal. But I tell you what, just having a visionary in our life, the value of being real. I learned that from Pastor Jurgen. For your senior pastor to like let you in on what's going on in his world, his marriage, his kids. I mean, I, I'd never seen that modeled in leaders throughout the Marine Corps. They all had a facade. But wow, this guy let me in. He trusts me. And I was like, maybe I can let other people into my world. And then he spoke a word of life into me. You are a shepherd. Have you had anybody speak a word of life into you that's resonated that you've never forgotten? And that seed will germinate. God, it may take 5, 10, 15 years, but we need to speak life into other people and we need to be spoken into. Amen? Then I have friends like Pastor John and Pastor Colin who have both told me, there is no one like you, Charles. Now, at first, I'm like, is that a good thing or not? I was like, I, I, okay, I'm going to take it as a good thing. So, yeah, but like to have someone call out your uniqueness and your gifting, you know, that's what I see when I look out at this audience. I see a bunch of winners, a bunch of champions. And if you're like me, you just don't know it yet. You just haven't been around the right association to call that out. And then I've got men around this room that lift me up. You know, one of them right there, Jeff Forbes. Tell you what, the gifts, the talent that that man has is just incredible. 
but partnered with me, I tell you what, it's been a great ride. We have enjoyed the journey. God has been on everything we've touched, you know, and I, I could start naming out names all through here. But uh, I'm just proud of every single person I've had the privilege to get to know you. And I'll never forget that quote. It's always stuck with me, and it's how I look at every single one out here. Every man or woman is my superior in some way. You guys have gifts, talents, abilities. You've been through things I haven't been through. You've achieved things I haven't achieved. You could teach me things. So do we look at our association as like, what can I learn from them? Sometimes a negative lesson, sometimes a positive lesson. But guard your association. Then family and friends. I'm blessed to know amazing business leaders, uh, pastors. My father-in-law, Glenn Wilson, has taught me so much about being a man, a real man. You know, and they see the potential and believe in me. We all need people in our life like that. I can tell you right now, two of the people that every single time they saw me, it didn't matter if it had been a year since we had seen each other, you know what they would say? Champion, how are you? You're a winner, you're amazing. I'm so inspired by you. I'm like, me? Me? Have you ever asked yourself that? But like to have someone to see that in you, it makes you want to rise up and be what they called. Amen? Yeah. So, and then my friend, Dr. Matt Hubbard. How many know Dr. Matt Hubbard? I know. He's a champion, isn't he? But that's just one guy that, you know, is following God and doing what God has asked him to do. So a man in your life that will take his time, his talent, and his treasure and invest in you. Do you have a man and woman in your life right now that are investing in you? Cherish that. Cherish that mentorship. Cherish that coaching. Be hungry for it. When's the last time you said, I see someone with fruit on their life in their marriage? They've been married 30 years. I want to be married 30 years. Can I take you to coffee? Can I get to know what has been your secret of success, like Ron and Quacha down here? I want to know everything that they have, you know? So that's on you. Live an accelerated life. Go for it. Don't let this be your status quo, go out there and invite somebody to lunch. Who's got a great marriage? Who's a great parent? Who's a great prayer warrior? Who's a great leader, a businessman? And it goes on and on. We can learn something from them. Take them to lunch. Amen? All right. Then finally, I found that you can live by choice or you can live by chance. How many people are living by chance, vice choice? You're either leading your life or you're letting your life lead you? Are you in the driver's seat? Today's the day that can all change. God has brought people in and out of my life over these last 48 years, and they have all helped me in some way along my journey. And God continues to bring people into my life. I'm excited for the next chapter, the next season, because I know God is growing my character. He's growing my belief. He's growing my faith. And he uses each and every one of you to help me and God will use people in your life to help you. Amen? Amen? And then finally, you know, take your top five closest friends. People have often said, if you want to see someone's future, look at their top five friends. How many people in your life are uplifters, encouragers? How many people are lifters and not leaners? And then I've always found that we have a lot of people come and go in our life. Some people are there for a reason, a specific reason. Who are those people? Some people are there for a season. Maybe it's five years. Maybe it's 10 years. They're there to help you along the journey. But then there's those special people, those people that are there for a lifetime. How many people do you have in your top five in that category? And if you don't have it, today is the day. Amen? Live an accelerated life. Guard your association. So the action is to get your top five, to start pursuing those relationships aggressively. God will accelerate your life and surround yourself with lifters and not leaners. Amen. All right. Now, one of my all-time favorites, point number four, your spouse. If you're not married here and engaged, don't tune out because you want to be a great partner someday, right? A great husband, a great wife. So everything I'm going to share is something for you. Genesis 2.18 says, The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. So if you're married or engaged, that's your helper. Think of that word. How do they help you? 
Genesis 2, 23 through 24, the man said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother, and here's the key, is united to his wife. How many marriages are actually united? I haven't always had a united marriage. I've been out there trying to slay the dragon, bring home the bacon, whatever you want to call it. And I put so much time, talent, and energies into to making a, a living that when I come home, do I make my marriage the most important? You know, I've been convicted by that. It's like, I, you know, God gave me all these amazing gifts that I use for other things. What am I doing to cast the vision for my family? What am I doing to tell my wife, like, I want you to be in submission to our vision. I need you. You're my equal partner. So that's some things we can do. Proverbs 18.22, he who finds a good wife finds a what? A good thing. That's right. We can just pause right there. But it goes on and finds favor from the Lord. Amen. How many want favor in here? All right. I found a good wife, and I'm operating in favor, and I want you to as well. And then I want to unpack this one a little bit. Uh, Ephesians 5, 25 through 28. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. What he might, then he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Now, God just gave me a new download on that. And men, that is one of the greatest missions that I think we could ever pursue, is to treat our wife and to make her what that verse just called. So it says, husbands, truly love your wife. Sanctify her. Think about what that means. Cleanse her. Wash her with the water of the word. You've got to be grounded in this if you want to wash your wife with the water of the word. And then make her a glorious church without spot or blemish or wrinkle. Think about that. Is your wife someone you are so proud of because you've invested in her? You've invested her to make that glorious church. You can't wait to introduce your wife to somebody, to show her off. I mean, men, that's a big mission. I don't know if you see it like I do, but uh, that's a lifetime mission right there. But I want to be that kind of man, that kind of husband that makes my wife the best that God created her to be, to partner with her, to wash her with the word, and to make her that glorious church. Amen? Amen. So our wife is our helper. She will help accelerate your life. And likewise, husbands, you are personally responsible for accelerating your wife's life. Think about it. We were meant to do life together in unity. You know, as I'm running a race, I want my partner right there with me, hand in hand, arm in arm, traveling down the same road, going for the same goal. Do you have unity in your marriage right now? If not, it's not too late. Start. Begin somewhere. But when you're united, you talk about an accelerated life. God realized that he wasn't enough, that he had to give a helper to us to help us on this journey called life to help us fulfill our destiny. So Tessa, my beautiful bride of 21 years, is my helper in so many ways. Yeah, give it up for her. She's an amazing woman of God. Yep. I love her to death. You know, she chose me, and I chose her to spend the rest of our life together. You know, she is, encourages me like nobody else. She runs in this race of life with me. My wife has accelerated my journey like never before. She's the one I would die for, but the one I want to live for. She is the mother of my legacy, my beautiful daughters up there that will carry on when we're gone. She is my biggest fan, my cheerleader, my encourager. Her opinion of me means more than all others combined. Her words carry the greatest weight. She can crush me or she can lift me to the highest heights. She sees my faults, my weaknesses, my blind spots, my cracks, and she can choose to cover them or reveal them, and she's a coverer. I may be the head of the house, but my wife is the neck that turns the head. Amen? All right, that's wisdom right there, men. 
I've always believed that our spouse is one of the greatest assets and gifts God has given us to accelerate our life, to fulfill our destiny, to achieve the life God intended. And I'm going to show you a little clip here. It's from my favorite series, Rocky. So, yeah, no push-ups involved on this one. But he teams up, he sums up two reasons in this clip. What men are willing to fight for. What they're meant to be bloodied, beaten, bruised, almost on their deathbed. But what are men really willing to fight for? One is victory for them and their bride. And number two is to be somebody. Victory for themselves. Every man wants a beauty to rescue and every man wants to succeed and be the man God called him to be. At the moment of his greatest achievement, Rocky, he's got the mic, he's in the center of the ring, beaten, bloodied, bruised, and he says these profound words. I can't believe this is happening. I can't. And I just want to say thanks to Paul. Fight me, Paul. Oh, I think. Thank Mickey for training me. We love you, Rod! Yeah, and I love you too. Most of all, I want to thank God. Except for my kid being born. This is the greatest night in the history of my life. I just want to say one thing to my wife who's home. Yo, Adrian! I did it! Yo, Adrian, I did it! Every man wants to make those words. Every man wants to be a winner. We want to win for our wife, win for our family. But th notice the association. Thank you for a challenger, Apollo. Thank you for a trainer and a coach, Mickey. Thank you for God believing in me. Thank you for the fans supporting me, but thank you for my wife who encouraged me, that told me I could be somebody. That's what I love about that clip. That's what you have. If you're married, you've got a helper, a husband, a wife. Be that kind of person. Amen? Amen. All right. So the action, accelerate your life, guard your association, pick your top five, take people out to lunch, get the fruit on their tree, and watch what God's going to do to partner with you. Now for the main event. Are you guys ready? All right, I saved the best for last. This is the key accelerator right here. We're going to kick it off with Matthew 22, 36 through 38. And this is so profound. If you pause on one verse in the Bible, this is a good one. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. Connecting with God is the greatest thing you can do to accelerate your life. I haven't always been wise. I haven't always realized that he holds the key to my future, the key to me fulfilling my destiny. How many times have I run off in the day, been about my own agenda? How many times have you? If we were to look back and we write our value and vision statements, and we've got our top one through five or 10, most people say, well, I put God at the top. I said, okay, let's test that theory. Pull out your calendar. Pull out your time block. How, many, how much time did you spend with God today? How much time did you pray? How much time did you worship? How much time did you seek him? How much time did you read his word? Is he really your number one priority? Do you really want to accelerate your life? Do you really want to be all that God created you to be? Well, that's, that's the secret right there. We've all been given 24 hours in the day, from the president to you. We all have 24 precious hours of the day. Just invest some of them. Start small. You may have never dug into this word. You may have never developed a prayer life. You may not speak in tongues, you know, but you can start. Today, you can start digging into this word. Now, a couple keys that I've found that have helped me. <clears throat> Number one is prayer. About a couple months ago, I realized that I needed to honor the last part of the Lord's prayer. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so what did I do? I started rolling over and hitting my knees. 
every single morning, I hit my knees. And I was like, God, I love you. Thank you for another day. Another day of life. God, thank you for my bride over there sleeping. Protect her, guide her, be with her. Help me to be the husband she deserves. God, thank you for my kids sleeping in their room. God, they're angels from heaven. Help me to be the man that I want them to marry one day. Develop my character, my integrity, so I can be all you created me to be. And God, I give you this day. This is your day. God, you lead it. I'm done leading my life. I've led my life for 48 years in its emptiness. But God, if I'm on your mission, if I see your people, if I see where you're moving each and every day, and if I just trust you and I operate, help me to hear that still small voice in God. Let's do something amazing. Just like those heroes in the Bible. God, I wanna partner with you. I wanna be all that you created me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. I started starting my, my day like that, and I encourage you to do the same thing. Thank you, thank you. It's a powerful, powerful way to start your day. Amen. Thank you, love you, <laughs> love you. All right, I got two minutes, sit down. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to go quick here. So worship, if, I was raised in Baptist church hymns, but I tell you what, guys, it's like I have never felt closer to God than I'm up here, I'm worshiping. Before, I, like, I just would listen to the songs, I'd look around the room, I'd see people jumping, excited, and I was like judging, for lack of a better word, judging worship. I wasn't in worship. But boy, when you are in worship, when you were the only one in this room, it could be 10,000 people, but you were the only one in this room, you're looking to heaven, hands raised, praising the greatest father, the one that gave his only son, that gave everything for me, just me. He would have came on that mission just for me. When you're in that moment, he is closer than I've ever felt him in my life. So develop a worship life. Develop a prayer life. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit out. The one thing God's teaching me right now is like, we all have champions, coach, business leaders, this, that, and the other. Did you know the greatest coach and mentor you've got, if you're a Christian, lives right in here? It's called the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many times? I, I, I asked myself, I was like, I have locked him in a cage. I have thrown away the key. I have gagged him. I have bound him. I have not let him operate in my life. And it's, I'm, it's done. It's done. It's like, Holy Spirit, you can do anything through me. It's not my strength. It's not my power. It's just giving you free reign, free will to do what you and only you can do. So I encourage you guys, if you don't have a prayer life where you speak in tongues, it was foreign to me. It wasn't natural. But I wanted all the gifts that God had for me. I was hungry for it, and I hope you're hungry for it. So men prayed for me. Something came out of my mouth. I didn't know if it was Babel from when I was a baby. I didn't know what to make of it, but they said, that's it. Just keep speaking it. Give the Holy Spirit a chance to speak through you. And this verse says, 1 Corinthians 14, 4, the one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. And I had a moment in time where I spoke in tongues long enough where I knew that I knew that I knew it was not me. It was the Holy Spirit. For the first time, I was like, I didn't just buy it on faith and belief that he's in there. He is physically in there and he is powerful. Tears streaming down my face, driving. And like, it was, it was just an encounter that I hope all of you have had. And so just let him out each and every day. Amen? Amen. Finally, I'm a big one thing guy. I've shared a lot with you today. God has communicated things. You wrote it down. Maybe it's something I said. Maybe it's something I didn't say. That's what I love about God. He'll tell you what you need to know. But if you get one thing from my message today, the only thing that you're going to focus on this next week, this next month, is develop a relationship with God, close and intimate and personal. I was speaking with a pastor friend, world-renowned leader, operates. I mean, he just this guy is on fire uh, in his late 60s. And I asked him, what's the secret 
to live in a life like you've lived. And he said, think of yourself as one strand. When you entangle God around that strand, it strengthens it, it binds it, it makes it stronger, and you're unstoppable. So entwine God into your life in all those areas. Amen? All right, closing. Pedal to the metal. I'm going to bring it all home. You guys ready? All right. There's different stages in your life. Uh, my father-in-law is a big car, Mopar guy. We restored cars together, so that's why I love this title, Pedal to the Metal. And he has squealed some tires and done some smoky burnouts. I love every single one of them. But what I want to leave you with is uh, let's think about that. So number one, stage one, do you have a vision for your life? Do you have a destination that you're going? Or is it just day after day rat race on a wheel? Pause and reflect. Where do I want to end up when I breathe my last breath? Create a vision. Write it down. Make it plain. Then number two, you need a vehicle. It could be a business you're in. It could be, you know, you're an employee. It could be something that, that makes you tear up every time you see it. I think God put that on your heart, that you were meant to do something in that area. But you need a vehicle to operate in. But a vehicle's no good parked in the driveway. You need to physically get in the driver's seat. You need to drive your life. You need to be the one in the lead, in the driver's seat. And then it's going to take action. Faith without works is dead. You can have all the faith in the world, but if you don't take that foot, and maybe you're, you've been cruising along, you're on cruise control. Maybe you're at a comfortable spot in your life, but you know there's something more. What I want to see every single one of you do is punch it. Put the pedal to the metal. Take that action and stomp on it. That's what God, that's the life that God caused you to lead. And then once you've done that, put the pedal to the metal. Then enjoy the journey. Look out the window. Enjoy the seasons, the good, the bad, the ugly. It's all good. It's developing your faith, developing your character, developing your belief. Amen. And then finally, here's the best part. Whenever your day comes, you see the finish line. You see the checkered flag. You see that banner stretched out across. You've got it punched, pedal to the metal. You are cruising in. You may be in the last season of your life right now, but it's not over. It's not over because you have learned more than I have learned at 48 years. You have got wisdom. You have failed more than I have failed. Pay it forward, sow it into somebody. Let your legacy outlive you by who you impart into. Amen. But here's the beauty. You're cruising along, and guess what's written on that banner? What I want to see, what I want to see for all of you, is well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. And that's all I got for today. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, buddy. So, hey, you guys could take a seat real quick. We're going to bring it home. If every head bowed and eyes closed, dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for everyone in here today. God, thank you for a word that you gave me to impart to your people. God, may it resonate. For those of the, in the audience today that have never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, God, I've seen a door, the door that you've been knocking on all their life. God, they came close to that door. They've looked through the peephole. They've seen you there, but they didn't have the courage to open it. They backed away. God, maybe they've come close before at other churches, other messages. And God, they put their hand on the doorknob. They started to turn it, but the devil, fear and doubt, caused them to take their hand off. God, today's the day they come up to that door with boldness, with courage, and say, God, the world is not enough. There's something missing. There's something missing in my heart. You're my only hope. You're the only thing that can fill that void. So God, today, I give you my life. I accept the sacrifice your son paid for me on the cross. If that's you today, raise your hands in this place. If that's you today, don't let this moment pass. Secure your eternity. Lock it in. Thank you. Thank you. And for those of you that have secured that eternity, but you know there's more than life. You know you want an accelerated life and you are ready to take it to the next level. You're ready to put the pedal to the metal. If that's you today, raise your hands. 
all over this room. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hands all over this place. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to say a prayer for all of you. Thank you, God, for the ones that you are lock, locking in and bringing home. If everybody can repeat after me, dear Heavenly Father, I love you. God, I realize that you've been knocking at the door. And God, today's the day I open. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me all the things I've done in the past. That does not define me. You have given me a new hope, a new future. And God, today, I accept your son, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Today, I lock in eternity with you. And I thank you. And for everyone else, just raise your hands while you're seated. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for your sons and daughters. God, they are winners. They are champions. They are one of a kind. They were meant to leave it, live an accelerated life. God, we want you as our co-pilot. We want you riding shotgun. So today, God, we give you permission, God, to help put the pedal to the metal, to bring people into our life, God, to plant us in this church, to give us a Bible that we can read, and God, we can speak your words of life, to God, to bring us about a spouse, a fiance, or God, to bring unity in our marriage, to surround us with our top five, and God, to press into you like never before. God, we love you. We honor you. And God, today is the day where we start a new beginning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone. My second message, so maybe I'll be writing back up one day. Thank you so much for joining us online. We hope you had a powerful experience. We want to take this time to personally help you navigate the next steps in becoming connected. If you made a decision for Christ today, need prayer, or want more information about our church, go to our website, c3sandiego.com. And if you didn't get a chance to give online during service and would like to contribute financially, you can go to c3give.com and click on the giving option that works best for you. We look forward to hearing from you. See you at church.
Come with empty hands, poured out nothing left. Still, I'm surrendering. Whoa, I'm bringing all of me, dry bones and broken dreams. My heart, an offering. Whoa, I'm breathing in your grace. Revived in Jesus' name, you speak and I am changed again. You bring me, you bring me back to life. You open up my eyes, you lead me into the world I know. You bring me, you bring me back to life, to life. Jesus' name, you speak and I am changed. 